Hello, welcome to Combat Chats Podcast. Uh, today we're going to be talking about last week's card as well as this week's upcoming card. Uh, last week we spoke about a few predictions, uh, what was going to go on this card. My predictions were way off, but we're going to talk about that. Um, as well as that, you know, we're also joined by Solly today. Uh, Finn, a future Solly for us. So uh, this is this is another one of our friends who we've been watching MMA with for a few years. Um, we're going to be looking to get him on just, just for a few cards whenever we can, really. So I'll start off by asking you a few questions. Um... What's your favourite fight you've ever watched live? Kobe Usman 2, definitely absolute war. Kobe Usman 2 was class. Um, I Kobe 1, but... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone fought Kobe 1. Uh, so, who's your favourite fighter? Uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Bobby, Bobby Green. Green. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, what was the other one I had written down? Shit, I forgot. So, who's the goat in my eyes? Oh yeah, who, who is the goat in your opinion? See, I want to say Bobby Green, but we all know I'm going to have to go with Khabib or GSP, but I can never choose. Uh, personally, I, I would edge to uh, Bobby Green. to a GSP in that instance, because just the title defence is alone. Really, yeah, I think that is fair enough, but it's just like... Khabib's dominance. Yeah, it's, just, it's a hard one. Yeah, yeah. I think they can both get goated at the like, I'd love to, I wish they could have fought. Anyway, getting into um, last week's card, for, will you start us off? Right, so last week's card was Kills Williams versus Randy Brown. Um, really, really good fight. Really yeah, good fight. Good you know, fight. a lot of energy from both fighters. Um, great performance from Randy Brown. Kills Williams is also very good. Mm. You know, um, started off with a lot of energy. Very aggressive. Constantly going forward, you know, and picking his shots well. Really, really entertaining fight to watch. Uh, Kills Williams, you know, very good on the counter. But there wasn't that level of you know, continuous aggression or that continuous, not necessarily continuous aggression, he was very aggressive in the fight, but not mm. like necessarily, you Too know, aggressive really going forward, you know, yeah. and at the end of the day. Just trying to look know, for a knockout constantly, isn't he? That's the problem. Well, he was, he was, he was, <laughs> but I mean, in all fairness, Randy Brown, you know, just that energy, you know, how good he's in the clinch, how good he's in the feet, you know, definitely, definitely won that one. I but think, yeah, um, good fight. yeah, I think the fight started off and, uh, I, I gave Chaos Williams the first round. I don't know about you two. Oh, yeah, because he, he came in and he glanced yeah. at... Was it was it a knockdown in the first that round? That was a I testament think. to his power. Yeah. That didn't look... It, that most yeah. punches didn't look like that. Yeah, don't normally someone. put someone out so, uh, like that. Chaos, Chaos obviously started very well, and I think he gets in his own, own head where you can tell it's not good when a fighter's just looking for the knockout because how much they're loading up. I mean, yeah, I mean, you look at that first... When he was pushing around the ground yeah. back, he did that... Jab, mm. planted his feet and uppercut, and by yeah. the time he threw the uppercut, yeah. Randy Brown had backed off. Ra- Randy, in my opinion, he Randy really started fighting well in the last two rounds. But you oh. could see, even in the first round, he was very aware of the shots coming at him. Like um, mm. chaos, chaos just—he <laughs> only has the knockout. He's very young in his career still, and obviously MMA fans love him just for his pure wildness and KO power but um, mm. I think Rand- Randy Brown got a read on him very early and that's why we saw, we saw him I mean I was I was saying to the people I was watching it with I was saying um, you can see Randy Brown was in a flow state in there. Oh mate that, that sec- second round when it picked yeah, up yeah. the way he's just like walking off after he mm, slipped and it's very yeah. like he wasn't thinking about no, anything he it's, was it's, it's, everything was comfy it was like yeah. it's so slick the level mm. changes yeah. as he like hits that jab and level changes mm. and then he'll step back and allow yeah. Chaos to come onto him and then hit him on the way in. It's Ch- quite... Chaos is is so tough because although it didn't look like Randy was hitting him with massive oh, shots, <laughs> it was constant, constant pressure. And like we would see a lot of fighters break under those circumstances and Chaos just doesn't stop going for that knockout. So. No, it's quite... And to be fair, to keep that up for... Yeah, for that Three long, rounds, because yeah, like, yeah. he was swinging a miss like mm. that constantly. It's going to... Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that the fight was very good. Uh, I thought... Randy Brown really uh, that will help propel his name more. He'll get a mm. bigger fight from that because he he looked very impressive. The slapping, yeah, <laughs> They're just slapping someone like mid fight. Mm. That's just <laughs> yeah. I thought Randy Brown was immense, honestly. The way he fought, he was so composed. He looked calm. You know, he wasn't he wasn't going. You know, he wasn't lunging for him. Like yes, he mm. was very aggressive and whatnot. But in everything he did, he did it with composure. Yeah. Uh, you know, looking at Williams, you know, um, there were a few opportunities on the counter where you know I was looking at Randy Brown and I was thinking to myself, could this be it? Mm. But he he just worked. Just the way he worked, you know, from an intelligence point of view, it was it was just amazing. I think yeah. it was just so far, it's such a good fight intelligence. I think chaos. It was um halfway through the second round. It was quite good from chaos actually when. What Randy Brown was doing is every time he jabs mm. or he throws that straight, he'll like dip and step back. And I think yeah. and Chaos noticed this. And as he dips, 
Chaos comes in with that. With the uppercut. The, yeah, it was like a kind of like... Yeah, like, uppercut, hook. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, it's yeah. just got him. And then, of course, yeah, they went to the ground. Mm. And, um, yeah. But, yeah, Randy's like so, got such long legs, that butterfly yeah. guy. Yeah. He, you don't see uh, MMA fighters use their reach as well as round, like, like oh, okay. in general as well as his legs though are so long you can like that distance mm. control and management like, is quite impressive I feel like Randy Brown's one of the one of the better fighters I've seen in recent times at using his range you don't mm. see MMA fighters really utilise the jab loads so uh, yeah I was very yeah. impressed it was with slow chaos him. down a bit this yeah, day because of course yeah. he's just come off knocking Hassan out yeah. and, and then Beza, Beza yeah. so I think yeah. that's really important that he did use his range as well. A fight like Chaos, you, know, oh, you can't, can't get touched by the, him. The shots he was firing, honestly. Yeah. The fact that he was able to use that range and the fact that he was able to keep him at bay mm. both times, you know, during the second and third round. You know, third round, obviously, Chaos came out a lot harder than he had beforehand. Not yeah. as if he ever wasn't going light. Yeah, well, yeah. But, you know, he no, really, needed. really picked yeah. it up. He made... Yeah, yeah, he did. He's but, got you know, good endurance to throw stuff yeah. like that constantly. Oh, yeah, the, cardio, <laughs> yeah. the, the cardio is insane. Mm. Absolutely insane. But, you know, using that range, he was really able to, especially during the second round, keep control of our centre of the octagon. Yeah. yeah. And keep him moving, you know, which would have been good for, you know, preserving, um, which would have been good for preserving Brown's endurance. Mm. But as well as that, also just gnashing him out because he's moving around constantly. Yeah. Brown, and yeah, that range, you know, you don't, you don't want to be getting, you don't want to be getting close to you. So really utilising that range, you know, he really put on a very good performance. Mm. Um, Probably one of the best performances in the car. I like his. Yeah. I do like his um, demeanor. Is quite good as well. Like throwing question mark kicks. Yeah, and like he's his, very confident. And his, and his like his you know his facial expressions when he's looking at it, you can tell it. It kind of like when he starts slapping him and stuff like it's mm. going to antagonise yeah, Williams. Yeah. It's going to make Williams I mean, rush some, in. Someone like Williams is going to get angry. Yeah, if he he's, doing that he too. saw him at the start of the fight staring yeah. him down. And he's mm. just like that slowly changed. You see him at the start of the second yeah, round. His whole yeah. demeanor changed. He just stood there like. And uh, also, what a lot of people don't know is, I'm pretty sure Randy has. Um, Henzo Gracie in his corner as well. So, uh, apparently, really? yeah, yeah. So, well, I, I think it's Henzo. It's one of the big Gracies, and he's been training there since he was a kid. And, um, yeah, so his ground game is very, very good. And it's, mm. it, his, clinch, be his clinch control was good. It's, yeah. I like how he utilizes his height. Because, mm. of course, yeah, that's definitely. with the range. And then it's when, and... yeah, it was when every time you'd get backed up against the cage, he was either going for the mm. underhook or he was threatening that um, standing guillotine, which, you know, yeah, yeah, someone yeah. like him, all he's going to have to do. Mm. We seen, I mean, John. I'm not comparing him to John Jones, but body shape, very, both very long guys, and we've seen Jones use the standing guillotine. I think it was against Machida, but I'm not 100. Um, percent And it, it doesn't happen a lot, but when it does, you it's often those longer, taller guys <laughs> yeah. when they're backed up against the cage, you know. And if, even if you're not going to get it, it's going to get you out yeah, of the clinch. And and you just, can just it'll unload. make the fighter think again about mm. getting you in that position. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that you know, I think about his clinch work. It can't be overlooked. Mm. There were maybe four or five, you know, occasions I can remember off the top of my head where he, when they were in the clinch and he reacted to it so well. Obviously, this the way he had control of it, you know, someone like Randy, but you don't want them too close to you. You yeah. know, in the clinch, you're, you're, you're basically, you know, you're, you're right next to each other. Mm. And the fact that he did control it whilst taking minimal damage. Yeah, that, 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 mm. that, that's, that's, that's incredible. You know, even during uh, the attempt at Dars joke, mm. he recovered from that very well. You know, and, and that, I oh, think yeah. it's being wary on the way out of the clinch as well because if Chaos decides to unload I coming think, out of the clinch, yeah, you're... Yeah. I mean, we've <laughs> seen a lot of knockouts from... Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think Chaos... Um, I mean, I think that's a winnable fight for him, but I just think he's too young in his MMA career it's, to it's, yeah. really change up his plan. I think it doesn't seem like he has multiple plans in a fight. It's a good win for Randy Brown, yeah, that. Very that's, good performance. The, the, like I said earlier, what Chaos is coming off mm. to step in there, and you do have to think, like, this guy's got yeah. serious power, yeah. but does he rely on it too much? Yeah, I that think that opening round was I think just he silly. relies on his power. I thought that before the fight. I mean, I bet you, you, it's, like, it's like when the level change happened, he caught him with that hook. That's like, right, try that again. That was clever mm. from Chaos. But yeah. then he, and then he just, as soon as that happens, he switches to starts the swinging shot. again. You see like, yeah. So um, now if we move on to the next fight on the main card, Fergs, could you want to introduce us with that one? Of course. Uh, so the next fight on the main card, if I believe... Um, I believe the next OSP, fight was... OSP, Shogun Rua. No, there it is, there it is. Uh, so, as a fight, I mean, it wasn't the most exciting fight. No. You know, um, it's important to remember both these guys, you know, legends of the game. Mm. The Battle you of know, the Grandads, as I call it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, 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 they're both older guys, you know, and um, it's, it's not, you can't expect it to be as good as, you know, as as, as some of the other fights in the main card, or maybe even potentially, you know, as, as good as it would have been 10 years earlier. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, you know, regardless, you know, it wasn't... It wasn't the most exciting fight. It wasn't necessarily a poor fight, 
but it wasn't that exciting. Mm. I think that, you know, Shogun did okay. I think, think he did well with his lower leg kicks. Mm. Uh, nothing special, but, you know, he did a good job, especially considering OSP had, um, he had a lot of, <laughs> he had a lot of range on him. Yeah. A lot of range. <laughs> much, he's a much bigger, you know, he's much taller, you know. So um, I think he did really well with that. Um, OSP, yeah, he did okay. No, I think it's the third round amazing, when OSP but... came out a bit yeah. better, like, to the end. Well, I think what really took it for OSP was just constant front kicks. I just can't even count. I don't even know how many front His kicks body was the red, body yeah. used. Yeah, like, he really <laughs> kept him away with those front kicks. And I think Shogun just doesn't have the explosiveness, the explosiveness anymore to so get What I was saying in. before we started is that he was he was opening up with the leg kick mm. to try and explode onto OSP. Yeah. But like you said, it's just... It he wasn't, wasn't there, there anymore. Yeah, oh, it's, and then of course sad, but... he's tied out by the third round, mm. and OSP's just thrown a couple of punches down yeah. the pipe, split his head open. Mm. I mean, yeah, I um, I I just don't think OSP has a big enough killer instinct in the cage. Like we've seen how much power, like, very martial has. artist. Yeah, like, yeah, and like we've seen some nights he'll just turn up, and it really it just looks like he doesn't want to be in there fighting, like. I mean, I, that sounds harsh, and it's easy for me to say that sat here. But chill, dude. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, looking at the two of them, you know, as, as far as the fight, it's... it's they're, 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 not, they're, not as, they're not as young as they used to be. They've not got the energy, you know, not to say they haven't got the cardio, you know, but, but, but there's a difference between cardio and energy. Yeah, definitely. You, know, you, you, can, you can be explosive and have absolutely very poor cardio, or you can, you know, you can have really good cardio and not be very explosive. Obviously, you know, they're both... Uh, 40, 139, I think, um, OSP. And yeah. I think that, you know, looking at him, you know, I, I I just think that, you know, with age, you know, once your body's broken down like that much, when you get to age, you know, your body starts breaking down like 27. Yeah, the game doesn't... I mean, I think now, I think that's too early to say because, I mean, you look at every UFC champion there, I think they're 30 or above or pretty much every UFC champion. A lot, so, more, a lot more. I mean, you do come into your physical fitness past 28 yeah, and stuff like I that. Think, so. I think with other sports, is your prime is younger, but in my opinion, uh, your <laughs> MMA prime is like 28 to 34 years old, so like roughly that sort of phase in your life. You yeah, know, yeah. of course, so that, that is your prime, but at that point, your body's breaking down a lot. Like, yeah, I don't think yeah, that's necessarily yeah. down to you being your physical peak necessarily, although mm. a lot of them are within their physical peak. You know, like um, Gage and Oliveira, they're, they're not exactly, you know, 23, are they? No, no, you know no what I mean? A lot well, exactly, at the exactly. P- pinnacle of fighting, you know. Of course, of course. But when you're when you're 13 years past the age, your body starts breaking down. <laughs> yeah, I think then that's... it starts. Then it yeah. really starts. You know. So I, I honestly think that um, you saw him in the ten years younger might be different. Later. But I mean, you look end of round two, start of round three. Like Shogun was like, yeah, he was he's tired in the last yeah. round. Like, he wasn't exploding like he was mm. in the first. No, and uh, it's just sad to see, really, isn't it? Like, I, I went through like a Shogun phase last week, getting ready for last week's pod, and um, I watched. I think I watched every single one of his Pride fights because. Oh me, yeah. Uh, it just I started. Was it in Pride twelve and one? I, I, yeah, something like that. I don't know. He didn't. He didn't lose many at all in Pride, but I mean, you see him beat like the people he did, and even when he came to the UFC, beating Chuck Liddell and people like yeah. that. He, he, people don't know how much of a legend Oh mate, is. Daniel Cormier made a good point Daniel Cormier said Rue was fighting in the UFC when I turned up yeah. and he's still, still fighting, fighting now gone, it's yeah. like same with Bisping Bisping yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's what I mean time. but it's just these people they just love being in the ring and even mm. if they're going to put on let's be honest it wasn't the greatest fight mm. was it but they're still they want to be in there and you've got to give respect to that I mean even at 40 years mm. old to get in there and you know so, uh, Fergus, I, I just got a question. Um, so Dana was talking after after the fight and he was saying um, people like OSP and Shogun, because they're not getting knocked out, like, he'll just, he'll carry on. But in your opinion, is it is it is it a factor that you have to look at? Like, your body's breaking down and putting someone in that situation where they're going to have to fight, where they don't have the speed and the explosiveness, is that just as much danger as it is if you've been knocked out in the past loads or I think you know just because somebody's not necessarily getting knocked out doesn't mean they're not taking damage exactly and I think that's important to you know bear in mind that not all damage is necessarily due to you know being knocked out mm. you, your, your body you know I mean obviously you know stuff like um stuff like your muscles and whatnot obviously you know they, they typically tend to um they, they tend to you know uh remain um strong mm. during physical exercise and whatnot yeah you know but stuff like your bone density and whatnot you know it it's, it's not always there you know and I think 
if I'm completely honest with you, you know, like, it's, it's all good saying they've not been knocked out yet, but you wait until the next fight. <laughs> what happens when they do get knocked out? I mean, what happens 10 years down the line when they develop, a, you know, a, 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 an illness or a disease? Exactly. Where, you know, they, they might ha- be left with, you know, um, a brain-related illness, you know, mm. such as uh, dementia and whatnot. You know, it's why in football, you know, yeah, they're talking about stopping kids and heading footballers, footballs, you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's yeah. just, it's, it's a risk. soccer. I think we're at, that, we're at that stage thing. at the moment of um, MMA where it's, we're going to start to see people retiring and people retiring and then people getting brain oh, injuries because right, yeah, like definitely. it's such a young sport yeah, when you actually yeah. think about it like you think about like a, American football's got a really big mm. problem with yeah, like brain massive. related I mean boxing there was the lawsuit wasn't boxing's there? been yeah, around American for... football I can't remember what player it was but he settled for Our... He settled for a massive law, uh, sum of money in court because of yeah. brain injuries. I mean, you look at that, um, the mind of Aaron Hernandez. He was, uh, he got CTE. They reckon they just, what, and that's what, they is just, that the murderer? Yeah, they, yeah. So they, link, yeah. they link it to that and it mm. destroys all reasoning. Yeah, well, but it's, we're, we're, we're at that stage now where there is legends who are reaching their like fifties. Mm. Yeah, in in MMA, and we're going to start to see. Well, I I, um, I don't know if you boys saw the news, but uh, a doctor contacted Bisping. And said, because um, he's having, I think it was night trauma or something like that, where night terrors. And the doctor contacted him and said it's probably related to CT, dam- like dementia. He, he's got like a lot. Oh, he of- took some <clears throat> damage. Yeah. He's, and he's always complaining about headaches. And- Do you reckon that Dan Henderson. Well, yeah, like all knockouts. Flying Dan Henderson, round and pound called CT. On Anderson Silva. You've got to think all the. that Even going back to Shogun, just because Dana is saying. He's not getting knocked out. He's still getting hit. And and he's been knocked out a lot of times. I, I In my opinion, I think Shogun should be able to have another fight because obviously, like, it's not... You weren't watching it like, oh my God, he's so far away from the pack. Like, it wasn't that bad, but there's, like... It's going to be... Pay- like, we'll There's going to be to some Tony. youngster that's going to be fed to him. Yeah, gonna... exactly. And we'll get on to Tony later. But, yeah, um, I think they're feeling kind of used. But like, they're ta- everyone's talking about it. Tony seems like he wants to fight again, and at some point, I think someone think Tony, needs to step Tony's in. Tony's brain's going to get yeah, seriously. Like, that shit's old. dangerous when you're older. I mean, it's important to remember, you know, it's stuff like concussions and whatnot. They're considered, uh, they're considered traumatic brain injuries, mm. and the reason why is, you know, you can have concussion, and you might be able to, you know, be coherent, and you might be able to speak normally, and you know, you a, a function in the eyes of the public you know what's going on internally as as, Mm. as a um, as a functioning healthy human being but there's so much which goes on in the brain and there's so much which you know although we know a lot about it there's still a lot we don't know about it Mm. and a lot of exactly exactly you know and it's um if you look at these athletes you know um from you know back in the day you know who are now like in their 60s 1065 you know look at muhammad ali yeah a lot of boxers a lot of boxers oh yeah you mean you even look at yeah it's, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, there was... football team, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. You see that Mexican boxer who got hit in the back of the head? What? Yeah, yeah. yeah you've seen him now. He's like, yeah. it's just, yeah. It's, no. a, it's, 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 it's a dangerous it's, game, but... It's the problem with the sport we love. It's... I mean, it's it's not nice, <laughs> but my, my opinion on it is, at the end of the day, Shogun's fought who he's fought, and he's done what he's done. And even Tony's done what he's done. It, at the end of the day, it is up to them when they retire. Still, but. that's the whole thing. Though it's all up to their discretion. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that sport is I never going like... to be a matter of you know, are never going to be a matter of it's completely safe for the brain. Mm. It, it's, it's not. You're you're taking blows to the head constantly. They're like gloves. Yeah, they're very like gloves. Four you're ounce. taking repeated <laughs> trauma. You know, it's not just the gloves you're taking trauma from. You're taking trauma from uh, leg kicks. You're mm. taking trauma from knees, elbows. None of us good for the brain. Uh, Getting knocked also... out is not good whatsoever. Yeah, the, yeah. They've got the new study on chokes. Um, People used to say, oh, getting choked out is fine because it's not a knockout, but they've shown multiple studies that getting choked out still really affects the brain. I don't know. I've been put out in a choke before and it's not. Yeah, yeah. It, you feel mm. slightly less. Yeah. You feel, yeah, yeah dumb mm. for a while after. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry, I just wanted to get into a chat about like more of yeah. the science side about things because... Like, like you made the perfect example where the sport is so new, we haven't seen it yet. But I think what we're coming people up on now, realize... we're coming up on twenty five years yeah, recently. Well, yeah, so it's... Or 30 or so. like there's, it's not been around long. But like, give it like, like you said though, the night traumas with Bisping, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. I think Ferguson's gonna be a prime Chuck example. Chuck Liddell, I think. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm not gonna come out and start saying I think this guy would have dementia. Yeah, yeah, but I like, think this just... guy would have, have Parkinson's. But you see, you see him sometimes in interviews. Yeah, you yeah. See him a bit... Diff- like not there all the time. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> getting into the next one on the main card. Uh, so the next part on the main card was Tony Ferguson <sighs> versus Michael Chandler. Mm. Boom. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> First round, 
a maiden to watch second round absolutely <laughs> devastating honestly you still know. thinking about it now but, it's um, just uh... yeah I mean it's such a shame because the way Ferguson you know started the fight he looked really energetic he looked really sharp you know we were seeing a lot of his movement you know which we were seeing prior you know he's had a bit of time off a year or so yeah so um, I mean it's much needed see, especially considering he looked like he was doing very well um, Michael Chandler was also amazing always <laughs> all, all, when, when it's needed you know, yeah. just pure athleticism but um, yeah it was really disappointing you know to, to see the result you know fair play to Chandler yeah, what, I mean, what, what a knockout you know what I mean Chandler, but Chandler knew exactly what he was doing at the start mm. of that second round he <laughs> yeah. did not want to stay in there because yeah. if he did Tony would have just I mean you could see the mood Tony was in and that you know, you remember when all the memes were getting released of Tony's last 12 opponents and all their faces were cut <laughs> up and that was that was going to be a prime example of a Tony fight, and it went from Tony time to it's time Tony. So like, it was it wasn't great to watch. It was it was really oh, nice because as soon as as soon as it opens, you you get that feeling of like right, you know, like we know what sort of animal Chandler yeah. is, and we know what sort of fighter yeah, Tony yeah. is. And you see Tony he's, he's, as soon as he started, he's, he's moving his feet back and forth. Mm. His stances are getting switched. Yeah, yeah. And then it was just when that mm. first I mean, punch went in. It yeah, was, yeah. What was it? it? Was um? Did he did he throw the cross and then came around with a hook? Yeah, I think? no, he threw. I think it was the jab and then he, he just came into around it. the top with the. With Chandler the was walking yeah, into a few yeah, of them. He, yeah, he did circle around. What was your opinion on the first round, folks? Did you, who did you score it for? Just wondering. <laughs> so I mean, it's a hard one, really, especially when you have a takedown like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. And especially control you had like you know that control on the ground as well. Tony landing the elbows from the, I'd say they just did did just as much damage to each other when they were on the ground. Def- definitely so, definitely so. But with that takedown, you know, oh it's, my. It's, Oh, absolutely bulldozed. Um, it would be hard to it would be hard to score it. I, I'd probably have to go, perhaps Ferguson just because yeah, of what he did down. on the ground. Yeah, and Although the saying that like, the takedown was also and the knockdown as well. Mm. Obviously, I think, but I think that the takedown, you know, would have definitely scored a good few points for Chandler. Um, mm. honestly, he's yeah. turning off his back though. He works yeah, so, so much. Good. That was like why. he's so comfortable being on his back, and yeah. he's then he's throwing little elbows mm. in, and he's throwing these little punches. I mean, we've seen what he's done yeah. for his back before. You know, he's knocked and someone Kevin out. Lee and, <laughs> it's yeah. just. And um, I think that was the prime example of why everyone wanted the Khabib fight so bad, is because Tony, when he's on it, off his back is is a is a bitch to get around. Yeah. You know, like he'll keep you in his guard the whole time. I feel time like a lot of fighters sometimes, a lot of fighters, what happens is, is as soon as they drop onto their back, they do this thing of like, right, I've got to like, you know hold the, their opponent's arms to stop mm. them from getting punched yeah. and then they kind of sit there and shell up and mm. they don't you know they don't open open your guard a bit allow yourself to move yeah. whereas Tony he yeah. will open his guard mm. and he will like hit you and it's, mm. and it's a nuisance then for them on top because they're trying to hit you whilst you're trying to hit them and yeah. it's a bit it's like a do you, you, know, you know what I mean when yeah, a lot of yeah, fighters yeah. will just sit there on their back and they I mean Chandler didn't look like he was having fun when he got the takedown no, no not like, most of the time you see people yeah. drilling him and he mm. was just I mean Tony was having fun you saw when the round ended <laughs> oh it hurts so bad because the round ended and Tony's laughing at him when Chandler's getting up and it's just it really was prime Tony. Yeah. And it did no, seem that anyway, but brings us on to round two. Yeah, really, let's go on to it? round two. And well, well, sorry, well, let's give us your thought. <laughs> right, the thing is, right, you're thinking, right, it's, as soon as it starts, there's not much of it. But what's happening is, is like you see that Chandler, right, he's not, he's not going anywhere near mm. Tony. He is because as soon as he's going to step in with Tony, yeah. Tony is just going to do the same thing he did in the first round. Tony's boxing, and he's going to let the hands go. Yeah, and. Oh, it was, it was Tony's um, stance. His hands are so low, and he keeps his head high. It's that like weird. Mm, yeah. And yeah. of course, his hands are so low that when Chandler steps around, you see him do that slight step. Mm. Tony like drops his hands a little bit again, and then that foot just he even dips his chin out. Yeah, a bit, and that I think. foot just comes up, and there's no time to move. There's no time to even like maybe slightly grab the foot or parry the foot. And yeah, before you know, it, he's out cold. He, he how, how long was he out for? It was, uh, it was three a while. Minutes yeah, it was, I mean, Chandler did four backflips, jumped on the cage, and Looked celebrated him. with the corner. By the time Tony, <laughs> that was even, a that was a drop kick. That's something you see yeah, rugby players do yeah. to a ball. Well, it was. Have, and have you got boys seen the screenshot of when the kick lands? Oh, my face! Like I don't know if you've seen it, Phil. Will someone take over from my talking? So like, yeah, but that face up. was screwed up. But I, I think that it was the slight movement from Chandler mm. that opened up that kick because yeah. it just. You think he's going for a hook, and you see Tony's hand kind of mm. come out a little bit. Yeah, like almost yeah. A, maybe get ready to yeah, power your punch. Does just push, push and then that out, foot just oh the power. I think. Chandler played that really well. Chandler knew what he wanted to do. Mm. He wanted to put Tony out. 
Yeah, look, look at, at that, that folks. <laughs> oh wow. Well. Yeah. Oh. Honestly, you know, watching that le- watching that kick, it was it's so <gasps> deadly because the moment the moment you saw it, you know, <laughs> even partially connect, you knew it was out. There's yeah, no way it anybody. That's what. Any, I was and if anyone is going to come back, and from he that, got it's absolutely totally flattened from it. Absolutely flattened. It was devastating. You know, he was out for so long. I mean, it seemed he was out for like watch because I watched it live. Pretty brutal to do here in the UK, but um. But I felt like he was out for like six minutes when I was. I was. I mean, we were all really, really concerned for Tony's yeah. well-being. Like, it's like it was bad. Did not, it did not look healthy. It didn't look no. like he'd just you know been knocked down. It's and... Tony Ferguson. The man doesn't go out like no, that. No, we've never. I mean, ever you look. Seen you look. It. it took. It took Gaethje, What was it? Four rounds. Five in the fifth round. In the fifth round. Yeah. But he didn't even drop him once in that fight. No, exactly. It was all I mean, on feet. Did, to be honest, I actually expected this fight to be similar. To, to the Gaethje game. Ferguson yeah. fight, I thought that Ferguson was going to come out a little bit weird, mm. and I thought Chandler was just going to open up on him. Mm. Every but time, that it just surprised me, and that's what's really annoying about mm. this. Is like, yeah, he looks so just, good, oh, mate. But um, can't quite remember what my prediction was exactly for this fight, but I did not expect that at all. No, honestly, you know, I mean, not not to say that you know the thought of you know Chandler knock him out, but it was always a very realistic I possibility. Thought, I think you said Chandler decision, but Chandler Tony decision. don't get yeah, finished. Yeah, I generally so. not yeah. not not like that. Not no. like that. I mean, well, now like no, that, yeah, clearly, but, but hopefully I, never like that again. <laughs> well, well, hopefully not. Hopefully not. But honestly, it was just devastating because getting getting hit like that, you know, it's it's it's, it's just it's not it's not even really nice to watch. No, you know, it's, it it's not like you watch, watch it and think yourself oh, really? what a knockout. No, no I like I enjoyed it. <laughs> well, I think I've made it I've I've made it well known since Chandler's arrived in the UFC that this guy's one of my favourite fighters. And in that fight, the only reason I wanted Tony Ferguson to win is simply because he needs it. the loss he's been on and how it just hurt me to see someone falling so far. But like any other time I would have wanted Chandler to win but it's, oh, but it's Tony Ferguson mate. he's yeah, just a big exactly exactly like, like... You, no one wants to see Tony and the lose, build up man. as well did you see the interview with Cormier yeah, he was just so see? like oh. he was just oh mate I was watching his interviews and thinking alright this guy actually doesn't this guy seems like he's still with it it's because like... I've always thought Tony's I mean, I mean it's like everyone El... thinks Tony is absolutely mental El Kukui got cocooned tucked in <laughs> yeah. mate like it's just yeah. sad but it's just one of those knockouts that like is gonna go down. Mm. Hey, you're just in gonna history, you're yeah. gonna say Michael Chandler, and mm. the first thing most people are gonna think is. And I'm um, talking to Michael Chandler. I just want to move on from the fight a little bit and just praise Chandler on what he's done since he joined the oh, UFC. Mate. Because you see it on the mic, like so. All right, some people might not be fans, but he is like, a, like you see the legends of the WWE. And you see Ric Flair and people like that. Oh, he's and got that. Yeah, like he's got that aura <laughs> where everyone will just be attracted. He he's imagine how many cells him and a fight with Conor McGregor would do yeah. at this point in their careers. I now. I loved it when he um when he beat Hooker. Was it no? Was it not when he beat Hooker? What was was that his debut? Yeah, yeah. Hooker. So when he beat Hooker, that I mean, yeah. To go back on that though, that lovely body. Yeah, the hook combo into the, set into the into the head, but um. What I'm actually getting at is as soon as he wins, you see him grab the mic and he looks calm. Yeah, yeah. And he just goes, Kobe! Yeah. Conor McGregor! <laughs> just, and, yeah. and now he's obviously came into the UFC, stamped his mark. Because I remember all the comments before he had his first fight was, this is some bum from Bellator. He's never competed with the best. And you like people seem so not to remember that. Every, he every... went out and had two absolute wars with Eddie Alvarez, submitted him in one, and a lot of people thought he won the other one. And that was a that that was a, a young Eddie Alvarez who was like a killer. Like, like Eddie I came think, to the UFC think, and became you know, champ. I think people do sometimes sleep on Bellator. It's yeah, still an elite fighters fight. Are top and they, you know, they are going to be able to adapt to the UFC. Mm. Or it's, you know, there are fighters obviously yeah. who've come from Bellator yeah. and done well in the UFC. Mm. It's not. But yeah, so. Uh, but yeah. uh, Chandler's amazing, man. His promos, his fighting style. I he, think he's one of the most electri- electrifying fighters I've ever seen. In everything my life. his athleticism, his yeah. fighting style, his physique. He's just, mm. just well rounded yeah. fighter, mate. Like, I'll be going back to how he's done in the UFC. You know, he's done so well since coming through. Obviously, you know, Dan Heck was his first win. Um, yes, you know, he lost his previous two fights, but, but you watched those fights. And Justin Gaethje. Like, mean, you know what I mean? And they're not losses. Everyone came out like those fights saying, oh my God, what a beast Michael Chandler is. Oh, yeah, 100%. Mate, you, know, that, put, that, you have to realise that Oliveira Chandler fight. That's the best anyone's done against Oliveira in this title. Yeah. Run. I mean, Dustin survived way longer, but 
And obviously he hurt Charles, but I wouldn't say he was anywhere near finishing him compared to what Chandler was. No, I mean, Chandler was go. punches like seconds away from becoming. I mean that Gaethje fight was just that was like something you see outside a pub. Yeah, like that was just two blokes mm. just hitting each other yeah, relentlessly. That, yeah. just, <laughs> that a lot of the crazy. fighters you fought on each other were on this mm. card actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think there was five fighters. You they're fought. active, man. Yeah. They're really. It's what I like about these boys. They're they're active fighters, and it's. Mm. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to give Chandler some praise, uh, and not so excited to get. Do we to have to do one. this? <laughs> I think just for the culture, we're gonna have to go into it a little bit because I've got a few points I want to bring up. But um, I'm gonna be quite horrible in a minute. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> to be, it might sound harsh how we're about to go into this, but it's not harsh. Is it? it's, it's what the truth. we saw. So Ferg, <laughs> I feel like Fergal's definitely the nicest guy here. So we'll let him start <laughs> it off. <laughs> All right, so here we had the Rose Esparza fight. And honestly, <laughs> absolutely abysmal. Mm. You know, um, three UFC fights, probably one of the worst I've seen in history. Yes, say if, it, if, say if, if, if I'm honest with you, you know, it's I'd rather really watch it because mm. there is just so much poten- There was so much potential for this fight. Yeah, you were really excited for this oh, fight. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, it was it it, 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 was, it was a rematch. You yeah. know what I mean? Like so. But honestly, as far as the fight was concerned, it was just so so so, so lackluster. Yeah. Honestly, and there, there there seemed to be like absolutely no no desire to really you know go for it. And the fact that at the end of it, Rose seemed, you know, confident that she'd won that, you know. I mean, to be fair, neither of them should have felt confident. It should have been a no contest. The fact that he just opened opinion. up the nicest guy here and he's just said... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you wait for a minute because oh, when yeah, I yeah, get yeah. started, honestly. But no, honestly, it was absolutely shambolic. And the corner as well. You know, oh, Rose's oh, corner, yeah, you're yeah. doing everything right. No, yeah, you're not doing okay. anything at all. Did you hear, uh, I think it was Pat, ba- Pat Barry, by the way, I love Pat Barry, such an entertaining fighter. You can't have your fellow great, in the ring with you. A lot of people have been saying that, but it's worked before in all of Rose's performances. So no, but anyway, we're not going to get into that. But what I was going to say is, what the hell was he talking like? He said, I think it was the third round that everyone was booing, and he he turns to Rose and says, "Do you hear that crowd booing? That's just reassurance of what you're what you're doing." Like, yeah, reassurance of that what you're like, doing is absolutely yeah, shit, abysmal. Yeah, <laughs> like it was so bad. Like and um. <sighs> And anyway, I just want to say, last week I felt like I cut such a good promo for this fight. Like we talked about how it's the whole division started with Carla and Rose. And by the way, that first fight was an amazing fight. Back back and forth, striking, grappling, and then it circled all the way around. Pretty much a decade later, to these two meeting it's again. A I think it was seven, eight years. So not a decade, but almost. And uh, yeah, and so it circled all the way back round to these <sighs> two meeting again. And Rose was a massive favourite. The fight starts, and well, no, the fight doesn't start actually. The fight the never The fight didn't start till like round five. Rose when it ended. Yeah, I mean, Rose had a okay five round. If we're I being think, really nice, I think you have to look at this right. If you would, if you watch the fight and you were to show some of the stats alone. Mm. So you don't normally don't look at stats because no. it doesn't tell the story of the fight. But Spars are two out of eleven takedown attempts. Mm. Rose got one out of one in the fifth, and this is where it gets really bad. Five round title fight that went the distance. Mm. Rose threw thirty eight punches, and Spars are <laughs> threw thirty. Yeah. That averages out of what six punches around. Oh, six punches around. Yeah, if they were kicking and grappling, you could maybe think, oh, if they were mm. wrestling and doing some really nice jujitsu, then maybe. Well, I mean, I read, I read in my notes. I don't know if you boys would agree with this, but I read. It both seemed like they were so scared of each other. See, like no one I don't know. I think I think Sparza at points was trying to engage. Yeah, you yeah. saw the flurry at the start where mm. she got the takedown yeah. and the, the double leg that Rose just bounced up from, mm. and as well, uh, and of the other one of the Sparza's where she um, the takedown got stuffed and then she picked the ankle. Mm. That's about the most exciting thing that happened across um, 25 minutes. I mean, but, it's really funny that you mentioned about, you know, them being scared of each other. Last week, what I said was that, you know, um, there could be a lot of nerves for us. Yeah, yeah, been a rematch, having lost previously. And um, I don't know whether it was nerves or what it was exactly. It had to be but, something. You've knocked out Wei Li with a head kick. <laughs> but but it's, it's the same fire, though. It's the same fire, you know yeah. what I mean? And I, I, I don't know what it was exactly, but something definitely impacted yeah, there was some to both of them, you know, and I, I think Esparza, you know, showed a bit more determination. And that's why she's champ. The fight. Right. Well, that's why she's champ. Look, but I even f- then, to be fair, for, for for a champ, that was a very poor performance. I mean, from both of them. And I think it yeah. wasn't really a performance. It was nothing. Not, you've got you've got Rose coming off three fights with Andrade, two with Wei Li mm. that were good. Yeah, Wei Li won debatable with some people. 
the second sun, one. Yeah. Um, and then you've got you've got Asparza coming off a six fight win streak, beating the top top contenders in and the then, division too. And now it's a seven fight win streak. But you're looking at it thinking you've won the title in the worst possible way. Like I was I was going to ask you boys a question. I've got a few more points on this, but I just want to ask this. Um, if Carla Esparza headlined her own pay per view after that fight, how many people will pay for that card? Like that doesn't even do a hundred. I think they should like just strip her of the title. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> so much. It. But uh, that's again another thing I was going to say is like the ref not in, not like you see jujitsu when they're stalling. They both get warned. I think it's jujitsu or wrestling. They both get warned for stalling. You're not allowed to just sit in each other's guards and do nothing. You've got to be looking for opportunities. I, I thought in MMA it was the same too. I didn't know you could just stand and look at each other. It's like watching a na- nature documentary with two goats just looking at each other, circling. Mm. You know what I mean? Waiting. Like I think I, I would rather go watch the Grizzly Man documentary again than that that fight because that that was class entertainment. I'd rather watch a CM Pump fight because yeah. at least he got hit. Yeah, yeah, and like the Derek Lewis um, Garnier fight. Was Garnier really... fight was way better. Oh, no. Yeah, it was. No, oh, let's I get know, this clear. I know, I know. In Garnier, Derek Lewis was way <laughs> this better. This is how bad this fight Romero is. Izzy was way better. Ah, <gasps> oh, so I was bad. disgusted. This with is it. the worst fight. I think it's the in worst UFC fight in UFC history. I mean, a lot of people disagree with me when I said it. Who were there? But I thought that was the worst yeah. fight. Look, it's the worst fight in UFC yeah. history. Yeah, it's definitely up there. Definitely. In the past ten years, at least with Derek Lewis and Romero, and that you were kind of on the edge of your seat, yeah. thinking when one of these guys lands, it's all over. Yeah, but Rose could have just knocked her out of a head kick. He's... And the last point I wanted to make on this fight, I'll get both your opinions on this. Why didn't like we saw when Carla got the takedowns, how quick Rose was able to either sweep her or get straight mm. back up? There was no threat whatsoever when she got taken down. Sure. Why would that not give you the confidence to go out there and let your hands go? I don't know because if you've got your corner telling you, yeah, waffle. Mm. I, I think <sighs> that's the biggest thing. I think that honestly, you know, when <laughs> Rose very cocky. You know, mm. got, yeah, got, got a bit yeah. of an ego. It wasn't bit, great. Very apparent. You know, it's, it's definitely been reinforced from his fight. Mm. And when your corner's telling you you're doing it right, in her mind, you know, that tunnel vision is just telling her, you're fine. You're doing it right. I think she you're, you're sit making, down you're, in front of a mirror and have a long, hard look well, at Well, that's what I was about to say is, I obviously, I've I've competed a few times and there's been a couple, I think you have as well. Yeah. And um, nowhere near the level, but... I, I remember the feeling of having a bad round in taekwondo or a bad round in boxing and going back to my corner and just straight away I knew if I just had a good round or not, if I did the right things. Even no matter what my corner was going to tell me, I knew in my head whether yeah. I did what I wanted to do in that round. She's... And Rose seemed happy with what she was doing. It, oh, it, it, I was shocked. Wait, what do you mean what she was doing? Well, what she wasn't doing. What, what, was, what was she doing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, think I think we should just move on. Yeah, from this. right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh. Is this yeah the main event next? Wow, main event. Wow. He's just yeah, Charlie Olives. He is one of the greatest lightweights. Mm, definitely. It. Oh. I'd say he's already the second best lightweight. I mean, you time. called this to a yeah. T. If you didn't listen last week, it's go last back. Week's podcast. <laughs> Listen to my call on this fight because I thought it would go another round because I thought Oliveira would look to tire him out a little bit more, but he didn't need to in the end. Fergal, what what did you think on this one? Well, I mean, <laughs> my 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 prediction wasn't quite there. You know, no. it's it, it a little bit outlandish. You know, five you, you thought you'd just decision. go for the. <laughs> but I, I thought you know if 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 it does if it does happen then it that that'd be sick. Really cool, yeah. But <laughs> obviously, you know, it didn't. Um, I thought Oliveira. I mean, I don't think Gage necessarily looked poor. Looked poor. Mm. I used to think about the way Oliveira started it, the amount of pressure he was putting on. You know, at the end of the day, it's it's hard to recover. From, it's hard. To, it's hard to deal with that level of pressure. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. It's very hard to deal with it. And obviously, you know, Gaethje did land some really, really powerful shots, and they did definitely do something to Oliveira. Mm. But at the end of the day, I just think that the way Olivia went out, I think the way that Oliveira just started piling on the pressure. I, honestly, it, there wasn't a lot he could do with it. Mm. It wasn't a matter of not being able to keep up with the intensity. You know, they, they were both going at a high intensity. You just can't deal with that bombardment. Of All the, the different strikes. strikes, yeah. And yeah. you know, it was so varied as well. It wasn't. It wasn't just you know punches or kicks or knees or elbows. It was such a like a wide variety mm. of it. And it's hard to read, especially when all of that's going on. And I think that, you know, Olivier, yes, he's known for his jiu-jitsu and that, you know, he's also known for his striking, but it really showed how good a striker he really is. Yeah. 
you know, as, and how good a lightweight he is. Yeah, because Gaethje is not an easy opponent at all. Mm-hmm. And I thought that submission, that rear naked choke was, I mean, the, the way he got in, you know, fair play, fair play. It's, Starting off with, was it a triangle choke initially? It's, yeah, yeah, the, like, like the reverse, reverse triangle, yeah. mate. And it's, th- this is what I loved about that. It was the reverse triangle. Mm. And I think that's what you call it, I hope it is. Yeah, yeah. Don't I think that's, coaches down. No, no, that is but, right. Um, <laughs> well... I don't know jiu-jitsu guys, yeah, yeah, but I think goes, right. goes, yeah. The arm bar's there, the triangle's there, but then it's when he gets out and you think, all right, and it's the transition. He's glued. He's, mm. he's yeah, glued yeah. to Gaethje. The way that he pivots as Gaethje spins. So as Gaethje spins facing down, which is a terrible idea, yeah, well, roll away, what mate. what he does every time. Yeah, and he, obviously, evidently, his jiu-jitsu is not on a, No, it's not where Wrestling, it needs to be. striking, mm. cool, jiu-jitsu, obviously, and he just... Yeah, as soon as Gaethje spins, Oliveira has already pivoted onto mm. his back, and yeah. He's, and yeah, like you said, you just know yeah. from that point that is done. I the think cop- the couple knocked down in the fight, and you know, I think um, I don't know if it will counted or not, but whenever you watch Oliveira drop to the floor, you know, the moment he's you know, he, the moment he's ready to get him in his guard, Gaethje's not up for it. Mm-hmm. He, he he's not thinking to himself. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for that, and I'm just gonna you know smack him because. It's not going to end well, you know. But he, seems, he knew exactly what Olivia is capable of. But and obviously, I mean, yeah, all it's going to take it, is, is but... if Gaethje feels like he can go into his guard and start trying to hit him, all that's going to happen is Olivia would have trapped an arm. Yeah. And I do, I do agree with both of you on that point, but I also think to get to the top level and become a champion, which so many of these, like, like everyone thought Dustin was going to be a champion, everyone thought Gaethje would at some point be a champion, and now. Char- Oliveira has come through and put a dent in all their hopes. It's his because, story, though, as well. He's yeah, been through amazing. it. Like it's. But what I was gonna say is, in this fight, like, uh, like with Dustin and with uh, Gaethje, when they both both hurt, um, but when they sorry, when they both hurt Oliveira, they were in no rush to jump on him and try to get the finish, which is completely ever... understandable. One sec, but um, but. Gate at some point to become champion, I think you need to go ahead and take a certain risk in a fight, in a position where a lot of people think maybe you're doing the right thing, but like all oh, we've seen all of it, like we've seen Oliveira get dropped so much mm. and come back and win exactly in that way. Mm. So do you think Gaethje should have took the risk and jumped especially with that second one, in jumping in and really just trying to finish him off? Yeah, I mean, he didn't have to drop into the guard either. You could circle around and yeah, come to the side, knee on belly, and yeah, have a fist. Yeah, exactly. Like it's, I think, is that the second one where he hooked him? He does yeah, that one, yeah. two, three, and it was when oh, Oliver threw the kick left, and he sort of just right, fell back. Yeah, and... left, right, left. Yeah, and I think it's yeah that little delayed reaction there. But I think as well, you're allowing someone like Oliveira that every time someone drops him and doesn't capitalize. Yeah, he's did, did you see how he like? How obviously how he's operating at that moment, he knows that they won't mm, go yeah, through it. And you see how not... calm he is. Yeah, yeah. Like most people, you know that look people get on their face when they get clipped. Mm. That's not there with no, Oliviera. He no. just goes back and he's just him, he just lands like that. Yeah, yeah. Hands he's behind his waiting. head, he's waves his chilling. legs around, yeah. and it's just yeah, I think Gaethje came out, I mean, uh, it's that straight right of Oliviera's mate. Mm. It's just straight down the pipe. And the opening what opening first fifteen seconds, one it, it's you've got yeah, Gaethje that, wobble. That's what I was about to say. Like I knew straight away it was gonna. Like I think Gaethje obviously talking so much, so much in the week about he doesn't want nothing on the feet with me. He he doesn't he he can't compete with Gaethje there apparently. So anyway, Olivia, and silence. to come come out and get stunned like that with the first punch, like you could see his legs wobble. He wasn't all with it with the very first punch Oliveira landed. And it's not all. It's that. It's that. Before they initiate, he initiated the groundwork and the jiu-jitsu. It was that same punch, mm. just and it comes, it just comes out of nowhere. He's there, he's there, yeah. and mm. he pops it back, and it's just, yeah, mate. It's yeah, that punch is. He got channel with it, didn't he? Yeah, well, he got channel with the left, but but yeah, he's still he's shown so he to have a lot of power in his hands. I mean, what I think to myself is, you know, obviously as you said about it, it's worth taking the risk. I don't think that's not necessarily, you know, not worth taking the risk, but it's important to remember when Oliveira is performing about my feet, mm. then is there any much more of a risk to go to the ground than it is on the feet? Obviously, you know, with Gaethje, you know, the, the way I, I, I saw him potentially winning that after, you know, the first maybe minute of it or so would have been catching him on the counter mm. when he got in close, yeah. throwing his powerful strikes like he does 
and get him down. So he could have potentially gone, you know, into the guard. He could potentially take that risk. Well, not going to gone into the guard. That that probably wouldn't have been a good idea. Mm. But, you know, potentially try to circle around. He said so. I try to go for the knockout that way. But honestly, I think that, you know, you have to look at whether, you know, either way, the way that Oliveira is performing, whether it would be how he would expect to perform on the ground or how he performed on the feet, I don't think that would have been a safe option. No. It's, no, there's no... In my opinion, he's the best finisher that you He's He is. He is. When you think of MMA... Mm. He's, he's what he is he's got the striking he's got the groundwork mm. he's got the he can wrestling kick. he can kick out wrestle Tony Ferguson yeah. with ease and the jiu-jitsu is just, just yeah. you don't even need to no one say can anything. compete with him in that it's wait, when you could you say he's like a complete MMA yeah. fighter it's, I mean the, <laughs> own, the only thing that Oliveira lacks is a tiny bit of footwork his footwork's not bad but I think he, mm. he could be better at get, getting out of range quicker and obviously we all know this by now and this is why the fights that he's in are so exciting is no there's no head movement oh there's no head movement no, no. no. That's he does not move you, you out of um, strikes I think he clips Gaethje and then Gaethje cracks him in the uppercut, yeah, yeah. grabs his head mm. and he doesn't yeah, even yeah. doesn't even try and shrug mm. the hand he doesn't mm. move to the side Gaethje just hits him with that uppercut and goes back but then he's so confident again yeah. in no one going to the ground with him he's I allowed mean, to recover they, it's almost like you've got to put him out cold to win really. I think you've made a really good point there of people need to engage yeah I mean yeah. you saw Chandler and Chandler was so close to finishing because straight away Chandler had absolutely no problem getting on the ground with him because Chandler's confident in his jiu-jitsu ability we've seen Chandler submit a world champion we've seen Chandler submit black belts in the past Chandler was confident in being able to go down and really go for the finish once he hurt him. And no one else is really... I mean, Dustin didn't get a massive chance to do that, but Dustin wasn't interested in being anywhere on the ground with Oliveira. You could see it. And, I, I mean, that's why I want to see the Chandler fight again so bad is because Chandler will take it anywhere with Oliveira. And, I mean, I think Oliveira probably wins again, but tell me who don't want to see that fight. Like, the first one was so entertaining. Oh, 100%. I mean, I think no, a lot mate. of fighters who fight Oliveira, you know, a lot a lot of them, as you said, don't want to take it to the ground. Yeah. And, you know, it's understandable to a certain extent, you know, but we want, I want to see a fight where it is taken yeah, to the ground. Yeah, Especially when it's a fighter like Chandler as well, who, mm. you know, he's probably not going to do as well as Oliveira on the ground. Mm. But he can certainly do better than Gage. At the end of the day, you know, he's good enough to not get submitted. Yeah. Oh, 100%. You know, he's got yeah. the st- strong dude as well. It's... Yeah, and his jiu-jitsu is world class. Like yeah. everything Chandler does is world class. He really. just puts his heart into yeah, everything, yeah. doesn't he? He's just... Just... I love Chandler. Oh, man. <laughs> when he, well, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think when you have technique like that and that level of athleticism, you know, something which we didn't touch up too much on his fight. Um, on, on, honestly, like. I, he is a top top fire mm. and um, I do look forward to seeing him fight again so it should be yeah. really good hopefully I mean I, um, him and Diaz have been calling each other out on Twitter today so I mean who don't want to see that either because Nate Diaz and Chandler fighting seems a bit mental but fuck yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it? Like, let's yeah. Do it yeah <laughs> it's worth a watch anyway yeah right? definitely so, only if Khabib was here to take Olivier down from his but imagine that I, and, uh, I'd love to see that yeah <laughs> I mean, Khabib and Oliveira is the most interesting matchup there. Right? It's just, yeah, definitely, definitely, I don't so. think that is something. No, I mean it's not going to happen, is it? But I mean, who who that would be so cool to see that now? We'll dream. Yeah, we'll we dream. <laughs> um, I just wanted to uh, get your guys' opinion on the Andre Filial knockout, the uh, counter hook. Um, yeah, that was um, that was interesting. Um, Van Camp, like you said, <laughs> you made that really good point of earlier. Of like, he's gotten hit by the hook. Yeah. As he's trying to go for the uppercut. And then he does the oh. same thing again three seconds later. <laughs> like you said, I think he um I think he might have a little uh thing for getting punched. Yeah, by yeah. Men. You see the first <laughs> put the his face the first time he gets hit with that counter hook. He's just like smiling. Yeah, yeah. With his eyes, his mouth don't move, his mm. eyes are just like But uh Philly out coming off two knockouts and he's just Who's he beaten? He just beat Beza. Oh, okay. So I think his first fight was Michael Pereira. The crazy guy who does with the yeah, backflips, yeah. And, and then that was like really short notice, and he looked really good in it. And uh, Pereira just had to fight a really technical <laughs> fight. And then the second fight was against Beza, and then against Van Camp, and he's just signed another fight for June. I'm pretty sure. So he's he's on a roll, and this is a guy to yeah, keep, keep an when eye was on. It, when did he beat Beza? Twenty one days ago. Yeah, like, like yeah, like two, three weeks. I think. Ago. Um, yeah, I think we'll probably say bye to Beza if you don't. He loses yeah. the next one. Do you reckon he's gone? The thing is, I he's think got so much potential. Yeah, he's a really good fighter, yeah. but it just slips away. I mean, what? I mean, look at that last round against Pontinibio. Yeah, slips away. Mm. Knocked Pontinibio. out by uh, chaos. Yeah, chaos. 
Yeah, I think um, he'll have a few more chances. But the UFC, they, I think they got like 21 fighters the other day. Like, well, I mean, I don't have the list on me, but we'll go through it in the next podcast because, I mean, me and Solly will be doing one in the week together. So we'll just we'll talk about some random points because like, there's not a massive card card that we can get involved in but um yeah so me and Solly will have a good chat about just random stuff like that yeah and uh getting on to the last sort of few points uh obviously Fergal next week we've got the big fight between the big boys in Rakic and yeah Jan Blachowicz. I mean it should be a really really exciting fight I mean you know obviously you know you look at Blachowicz he's a little bit older by about nine years, I think he's eight. <laughs> a little, a little bit, bit older, by about a nine decade years. older. A, 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 not, not quite a decade, almost, <laughs> almost. But um, yeah, it should be a really good fight. I mean, both are really, really good fighters. You know, um, I think Blakovich. Um, it would be interesting to see how he does against a fighter who's you know a bit younger. You know, not if he's not done it before. Mm. But, <laughs> yeah, um, beat Israel Adesanya. I still can't believe that. I think, I think it's nuts. He does that, right? It's, you know his, what I mean? it's, his, it's his presence in the yeah, octagon. He's yeah. so. I mean, you look at um, even before Glover did him, and you did see him like the way mm. he moves around, moving around Glover. I mean, the Dominic Reyes fight too. Oh mate, yeah, mm. that's yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, even when he fought, what am I thinking about? Um, was it recent? Uh, recent fights. Um. There was Glover, but either way, like I just think it's 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 it's, it's directness. Yeah, it's presence. Yeah, he it, will charge you down. Yeah, and yeah. he won't charge you down in like a, it was like that Dan Hardy breakdown. Mm. Yeah, yeah. When, when he was fighting um, Latifi, mm. and who else was it? Oh yeah, yeah. I know which one you're about now. It was um, Devin, Devin Clark. Devin Clark. It's yeah. that directness where he'll. He'll force you one way. Mm, yeah, yeah. He'll make sure that you can cut off part of the cage. And you, mm. you actually, when you see it, the amount he actually moves. Mm, yeah, yeah. Around. He, he's so good at cutting the angle off to make you move the same way. And then picking those shots. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, um, mm. it's interesting. I think it's quite interesting to see how Rackage deals with it. I think... Um, Rackage fights very similarly. This is Rackage's, obviously, pro- in my opinion, his hardest test by far. Would you both agree with that? Yeah. I definitely so definitely yeah. so. I mean, it should be a really interesting one. I mean, looking at both of them, you know, Blackovich, you know, obviously you beat Adesanya, a very, very experienced fighter. You know, Rakic, not exactly inexperienced, you know, no. but not, not that level of experience. I think, you know, you look at Blackovich, you know, he's, he's a very um, heavy striker. Yeah. You know, well, very clearly, heavy. Clearly, yeah. clearly, you've clearly. got that um, stat there of uh, the Rak- takedowns as well. What's, what's the stat? Uh, the stat for his takedowns. So, uh, so what, got the takedown defense. Very, both of them got really similar. Um, overall Take, stats oh, yeah. on like Strike inter- octagon time yeah it's quite yeah, a yeah. which surprised quite me sim- is, are they similar yeah I think they are yeah. I think they're very comparable it's the kicks yeah they both both rely so I they, mean they've both sorry. got a big pair of legs on them mm. yeah <laughs> so when it comes down to Blackovic you know he's his takedown accuracy is 53% meaning about over half his takedowns he's uh, he's, 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 he's that accurate Rakic's defence is 99% 90%, 90%. 90%. yeah See, what I think is going to be interesting about this fight is, you know, I think that Rakic is really going to be, you know, able to keep him back with uh, with his leg kicks. Yeah, yeah. And I think think that's something which Blakovic is going to struggle with. Mm. Obviously, Blakovic charges you like a tank. Yeah, he does just run. He does does run. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, there's other two things that are going to happen with leg kicks. He's going to throw him, he's going to keep him at distance, or Blakovic just isn't going to care. Yeah. And he's going to charge for him. I can see him not caring. I, 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 in, my on, so in my honest opinion, I think the leg kicks will, leg kicks from Rakic will be a massive problem. Yeah. I, I generally do. I think, I mean, I'm, I'm not 100% on who's going to win this one, but I think if Rakic beats Jan, I think 80% of the work will be mm. to leg kicks. Because I think, oh, 100% I think, a doubt. I think mm. those leg kicks are going to be a big part in stopping. Jan's Blahovic moving. from moving yeah, around because yeah. you think if you're going to like try and force him mm. away from the side of the cage that you want him to go yeah. and then he just throws yeah, just, he just stands there and as you're circling into him just throws a big leg kick as you're coming in as well mm. and if you plan if you plan as yeah. you're moving yeah it's gonna I think the uh, the main way Jan Blahovic wins this fight is he's got to be busy I mean, not not sort of Thiago Santos busy, <laughs> where he just ran at Thiago Santos and got clipped with the hook coming in. Yeah. But Dominic Reyes busy, where every time Rakic is looking to set himself for a You're strike, something. you blast it. I mean, he landed two two body kicks against Reyes, and it, it literally looked like someone bloody had a girt in with a machete or something like that. Yeah. Because the the slice and the red mark and yeah. there was literally a foot 
like an outline of a foot on rack on big like heavyweight body. foot. <laughs> yeah, so I think he's got to be first to the strokes. He can't let he can't let Rakic push him back and just leg kick him for five rounds because Rakic will be more than happy to do that. Oh, 100 percent. I think he needs to be very proactive. Mm. I think he needs to be, you know, not necessarily constantly going forward, but ensuring that he is, you know, productive in his strikes. Yeah. You know, I mean, wrestling. Like, I, 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 I could see him maybe going for a takedown. I think he will. I, I don't know how well it's going to go. Yeah, I don't think it'll especially work, especially with a takedown defense like that. But who who's, knows? He's um, very, he's very good wrestler, you know. So who mm. knows? Who knows? Who's the taller dude? It's uh, it's Rackage. He's six yeah. four. I, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and give my prediction. I think. That um, oh, the thing is, Rakic, Blakovic, TK, round two. Yeah, I is, it, is that too early? Is it three rounds no. or is it five in it? It's a five round event? fight. Yeah. Do you reckon round two, round three, TK well, to Blakovic? I'm I'm going with. I think. See, it goes one of two ways for me. Blakovic will be really aggressive and finish him early ish, like you said, or I can see. I can see Rakic. I don't think Rakic will get the finish, but then again, Decision, maybe. This, when they're this size, and Rakic yeah. has unbelievable knockout power, yeah. it just doesn't look. Do you think? Do you think lot. maybe if he keeps him away with that, with those hefty leg kicks, I and think then that's just piece, what, tries to piece him up a little bit? I maybe. could, I could even see a case where the leg kicks are landing, the leg kicks are landing. We get about three, four rounds in, and Blahovic gets re- starts getting really frustrated and rushes in like he did against Thiago Santos and leaves himself open and gets caught later on. Yeah. So I'm not sure in this fight. I usually back Blahovic in every fight he's ever had because I love Jan Blahovic. And he's He's just. But I think I think um, Rakic is too patient. He picks his shots so well. I'm I'm gonna go with. He's the a young. Rakic he's the young puppy, puppy in his. Yeah, I think I'll go Rakic yeah. decision. That's what I'm going yeah, go to go for. I, I think I'll be surprised if it goes all five. Rakic you know. decision, or I think if I think yeah, TK round two or three maybe mm. for Black Blahovic. What about you, folks? I'm going to go for a sensible decision this week because obviously you know my <laughs> predictions weren't quite on point last Wasn't week. Wasn't your Olivier uh, Gates you had a sensible decision? I, I reckon. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Probably not. Yeah, no. I'm going to go for it. I got um, cut short about four rounds too early, <laughs> son. <laughs> about four rounds and three minutes too early. <laughs> Oh, that's free, wasn't it? Yeah. Nah. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go for a rack I'm gonna go for a rackage uh, decision. I just think that, you know, I don't think that, you know, Blackovich is gonna be able to get too close to him, especially with those leg kicks. Mm. Um I'm 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 not saying that, you know, uh, I, I I don't necessarily think this is gonna this isn't my necessarily definitive one because yeah. honestly I think this could go, you know, a few different ways. Same. But I think that, you know, from a logical point of view, it makes I I think that Blackovich is really gonna have a hard time doing it and I think that Rash is gonna come out on top. Mm. Uh, you said about Blackovich you know getting a bit too close and um Rakic using that, you know, uh, knockout power. Mm. It's a possibility, but i if, if I'm honest with you, I I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be um a racket to see, you know, keep it on the feet and whatnot. Mm. And um I'm just gonna go for just to finish off the podcast because we've almost done an hour now. I'm just gonna uh give you guys uh like a few fighters to keep your eye on. So obviously the co-main, we've got two two kind of big names in the same division, the light heavyweight division. we got Ryan Spann and Ion Kutaliba, which is destined to be a knockout. I would yeah. be shocked if that <laughs> fight goes the whole way. But um, I think Kutaliba looked really good against Devin Clark last time out. Uh, I don't know if you boys remember the video, but... There was a video of Devin Clark in his corner in between rounds and all his front teeth were bashed out, oh. like completely missing. Mm. And I think his dad is his coach and his dad turns to him and says, we should call the fight. And Devin Clark turns and says, oh, fuck it, I'm going to need surgery now anyway and carries <laughs> on for the rest of the fight. So, Come on. So, like, uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. But I think... Uh, I think uh, I'm going to go span in that one just because Kutaliba does slow down a lot. Um, if people haven't watched, we got Davy Grant fighting Schmolker. Davy Grant is a big fighter here in the UK. He's got some highlight reel knockouts yeah, in the UFC. Davy Grant, my yeah. guy. He had a very good fight with Cheeto Vera. I, I, was that his last fight? Let me just check. I think he lost to Adrian Yanez in his last fight. Yeah. Yeah, so he's lost to Marlon, Marlon Vera. Vera and Adrian Yanez. None of them able to finish him, which is decent for her. <laughs> For Davy Grant, so um, I think I think Davy Grant will beat Lewis Schmolker. Um, I'm going to go with that because he's English too. And um, good Ribas. Um, I think Amanda Ribas will have you reckon? that. Yeah, yeah, she. I mean, she she has had uh, a bit of a slip up recently. She was it her last fight she lost, or yeah, she lost to Marina Rodriguez before her last fight. But obviously, everyone's losing yeah. to Marina right now. Uh, but I think she's got she's got 
good, very good striking, good on the ground. I, I think Shumi's going to... I mean, I think Caitlin's very good, but I, I'm going to yeah, go read that. Nice to see how that one plays and, out, actually. Uh, if any of you haven't seen, Jake Hardley is making his UFC debut. He was on uh, Dana Watts Contender Series. Uh, he's 8-0 and in his professional career. He wasn't the one kicking off, was he? Yeah, yeah, yeah he was. He was. Uh, Dana White didn't have very, some nice words for him after, but still gave him the contract, so that just shows how much he impressed during his fight. I think he was a big underdog and fighting a guy a lot bigger, and he got a choke in quite quick, so he's one to look out for. Obviously, we've got Angela Hill, Nick Maximov, who's a famous training partner, and Nate Diaz, who was undefeated. There's a, there's a lot of good fights on this card to keep an eye on for, so... Um, yeah, I'm really excited for this one too. Uh, so yeah, me and Stolly will be back in the week to talk about that. I mean, it should be a really good card. I am looking forward to it. Anyway, that's all we've got time for. Thank you very much for listening. Um, if you can, you know, be sure to follow us on Spotify, YouTube, whatever platform you listen to us on. And uh, thank you very much.